morning. Good morning. He 
is so worthy to be praised. Yes, good morning, Gloria. God is so good. Good morning, Jennifer. Welcome from Mississippi. Good morning, Raphael. Oh, I thank God for each and every one of you guys. Oh, good morning, Pat. Yes. Hey. Hey. Yes, God. Yes, God. Good morning, Beverly. Good morning, Janice. Good morning, Melrose. Yes, God. We're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you, God. God, he's so good. I can stay in worship. <laughs> I can just stay in worship. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. I thank God for each and every one of you guys. And you don't count it robbery to get up early to join us online just to praise God, to share a good word, and to bless each other. So I say good morning, good morning, and welcome to the POW prayers of warriors and of course you know your host bishop dr david e jackson would love to be with you guys at this very moment but he is now traveling he's on assignment and so he's graciously asked me to stand in for him and we know those are some big shoes to fill so i'm gonna do my best but god has given me a word to share with you guys this morning and i pray that this word will go forth with might and it is received and i ask god to just humble me his servant and use me as a vessel and i pray that this word will touch every heart and mind as god has ordained it to be so before i get started i want to acknowledge our Queen Ambassador Dr. Jacqueline King. Without her visionary pursuits in doing this, we would not have this platform. And of course, I want to also acknowledge Dr. Oscar Underwood, who is our overseer. We thank God for this mighty man of God and for what he's doing. He's covering us constantly in prayer. And so I want to also just thank each and every one of you guys who are online listening from wherever location you are. And if this is your first time, I want to welcome you and tell you thank you so much for plugging in and tuning in to the POW. And Dr. David E. Jackson will be back very soon. And I promise you, you will want to come back to hear his dynamic messages that God always uses him so wisely to share. So, Without delaying any further, let's go on and get ready for this word. So what, let us pray. Let's begin in prayer. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we say thank you, God. We say thank you, Jesus. And we say thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh God, how we love you. Father, we say thank you, God, for waking us up this morning. We say thank you, Lord God, for giving us life and for giving us strength in Jesus' name. Father, we say thank you for watching over us, Lord God, and our families throughout the night. We say thank you for giving your angels charge over us in Jesus' name. Father, we worship you for giving us a new breath, a new chance. Lord God, to fulfill your purpose and your will for our lives. So Father, we thank you, Father, and we ask you, Lord God, to usher in your glory. Let us feel the weight of your glory today. Let us feel your presence, Father, in this space of gathering, Lord God. For we know where two or more are gathered, so are you. Father, we do not need to be within the four walls of a building to praise and to pray and to worship you, Lord. God. So meet us online today, Father, and touch those, Lord God, who are just curious, who, those who are wondering, those who are lost, those who want encouragement, and those who just gather together to worship you and pray and praise with all their mights, Lord God. I ask you, Father, let your liquid love run down from heaven, touch our hearts, overflow in us, Lord God, 
for you are the potter that formed us out of clay, Lord God. We are just vessels waiting for you to fill us up, Father. And I ask you, Lord God, fill us up with your love, Lord God. Fill us up with your joy, Father. Let us burst forward with your goodness, Lord God. As we step out today at the start of a new week, Lord, that your light will shine upon us, Father. That we wear a crown of glory, Father. And that any forms of wickedness, Lord God, hey, will bounce off of us. Oh, Lord God, it's like a force field. Your love, your power, Lord God, is a covering. It is a force field, Lord God. Your hedge of protection, Lord God, is with us wherever we go. And any arrow shot by the enemy, Lord, will bounce back, Lord God. Hey, it is returned to the sender in Jesus' name. So, Father, I thank you, Lord. Use me mightily as you see fit. I am nothing more than a mouthpiece, Father. I am nothing more than your humble servant. Father, let me execute your word with wisdom, with power, and with might. And I ask you, Father, let every hair on this scope, on this prayer line, on this Facebook Live, Lord God, receive your word with an open heart. Lord God, Put your word in their hearts, Father, and raise them up. We need new soldiers, Lord God. Raise up the apostles. Raise up the prophets. Raise up the evangelists. Raise up the pastors and teachers, Lord God. Raise up your army, Father. Every sleeping man and woman, we say, wake up and let this be the beginning, Lord God. Oh, so Father, I submit this prayer unto you. And I plead the blood of Jesus, the mighty blood of Yeshua, the blood of the Lamb, the blood, Lord God, that is a resurrecting power. I plead it on this line, Lord God. Let no interruptions of the enemy succeed. We are winners, Lord God. I plead the blood on the head of everyone connected to this broadcast, whether live or in replay. And Father, saturate them with the blood. Soak them with the blood. And that blood is a healing power. So right now, I declare healing and deliverance in the name of Jesus. And so Father, let it be so. With all hearts and minds in agreement, we come together, Father, in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Yes, touch and agree. Touch and agree. Hi, Chevy. Touch and agree. So, uh, the message, God, it was interesting. So, first, let me say the key scriptures are Psalms 146, verses 5 through 7, and Proverbs 30, verse 5. And so, if someone can put that online, it's Psalms 146. Verses 5 through 7 and Proverbs 30 verses 5. And I will read the scriptures and go right into the message because it ties it all in. So here beginneth the reading of God's holy word. And I'm going to read from the New Living Translation version of both these scriptures. So Psalms 146 verse 5. But joyful are those who have the God of Israel as their helper, whose hope is in the Lord, their God. He made heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. He keeps every promise forever. He keeps every promise forever. Rightfully, I'm going to add verse seven. He gives justice to the oppressed and food to the hungry. Oh, I love the Lord. And Proverbs 30, verse 5, from the New Living Translation reads, Every word of God proves true. He is a shield to all who come to him for protection. And so I wanted to just go ahead and read the scriptures now so I can just flow right through the message. And so I entitled this, Will You Wrestle With God? And when God gave this message instantly, um, the story of Jacob and how he wrestled with God came to mind. And so I want to talk to you guys about our promise keeping God and maintaining a level of faith that requires you to sometimes wrestle with God. 
as I prepared this message, God shed three key things for us to keep in mind as we contend with matters and seek God's direction. One, that is to pray, pray fervently and pray with honesty. Two, understand that faith produces persistence. And three, God finishes whatever he starts. He's a promise keeping God. And so just keep those three things in mind. So what does all of this mean? It means that persistent, honest prayer coupled with unwavering faith moves God. Persistent, honest prayer with unwavering faith moves God. And I'm here to remind you that God promises to you will surely come to pass because he's a promise keeping God. And so we know, and when you, with all the teachings that many of us have been sharing, and of course in your local churches with your pastors and all that, we all know there is power in prayer and prayer is our communication with God. It is a free will. It is a free way for us to seek God's help, to seek his face, to commune with him, to share our thoughts, our minds, our struggles, our hopes, our dreams with God. It is our way to, to fight, actually, because we know it is also a weapon that we can use against spiritual war, against spiritual enemies and also natural enemies. So we must pray. And when Bishop last met with us, when Dr. David E. Jackson met with us on Friday, he talked about the importance of being able to hear in the spirit before you see the manifestations of things to pass. And he reminded us of how Elijah prayed and he, you know, he sent, um, you know, Ahab, well, he was say he sent him back seven times to go look for the rain because he said he heard the sound of rain. And so prayer is an important thing that we must make a, 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 a supplement in our daily lives as believers in Christ. So as I said, the prophet Ahab, the prophet Elijah told Ahab that there was a sound of abundance of rain. And in the message, there had not been an audible sound. What Elijah was talking about is the sound that came from his faith in knowing what he was asking God would manifest. And so it was not audible to the human ear. So Elijah demonstrated to us, he was operating in a level of faith in hearing from God, hearing what God was doing in the spirit so that there would be a physical manifestation of what he was praying for. So my question to you is how many of you will walk in this level of faith? In saying, I see it. I know it's happening. I receive it. I believe God that I see it. I know that my child will be healed. I know that my friend will be delivered from addiction. I know that my credit score will go up. I know that I will have that house. I will have that car. I know that I am healed. Seeing you know, the world teaches us that seeing is believing. That is the, ma that's the man's way of dealing with things in life that they have to see in order to believe. But as believers in God, we know that there is a spiritual realm that exists all around us. This is why scientists and doctors cannot explain many things in life because they want to rely on their knowledge, their proven knowledge to demonstrate certain things. But don't you know that God will continue to confound those that think that they're super wise. So we know that as believers in Christ, that we must believe in our hearts. We must see it and hear it in the spirit and believe in God that what we're asking for will manifest. And we have all experienced this on certain levels. How many times have you spoken about something and I've seen it happen in your life? And I'll tell you something. It is one of the best tricks of the enemy against all men, whether you are a believer or not. The enemy is always ready to snatch up words from your mouth, particularly the words that goes against the will of God for your life. 
The enemy loves it when we proclaim things over our lives, over our situations, over our loved ones that doesn't align with the will of God. He loves it. As a matter of fact, he rejoices because we've made his job easier. And so you've got to understand that we, when we speak, we speak with authority. We speak with wisdom. We speak with what God has said. If you are seeking healing, speak healing. Speak, I am well. I want to lose weight. I'm going to lose 10 pounds. I, pull up. I speak that because when I speak it, I'm training my mind. I am training my mind. This is where I am heading. Once you train your mind, your actions will follow up. You speak to yourself because you're training your mind. You're feeding your mind. As the world says, you're feeding your psyche. You're training your mindset that there must be a change in my behavior. When you speak, when you pray, you are training your mind that there must be a change in behavior. And then the actions will follow. That is what this is all about. And so Elijah was training Ahab, that you know what? I heard rain. You better believe I hear it. He went back. He said, I didn't see anything. He said, go back seven times. But he was also teaching him a powerful lesson that we must not give up. When we are believing in God for something, we must persist and not give up. Seven times he told him to go back and check. Seven times. Do you quit after the first time you pray? Because something happens that may derail your plan or make it seem like God is not hearing you. Do you automatically give up? No. God is telling us this was an absolute demonstration of faith and believing in what it is that God is saying and what he believed will come to pass. He demonstrated that seven times. They kept going, that going until that small cloud manifested and the rain came so he said go again go again go again go again go again and you see elijah who was a mighty man of god showed us that immediately his prayer wasn't answered so if that could happen with elijah who are we and why should we become upset so stay with it the Bible tells us the, fer the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So don't give up. Stay with it. Stay the course. Believe in God. Believe in God. And the second thing, faith produces persistence. What do we mean? When we know what we know, what we know. See, when we know something, when we know what we know, what we know, nobody can change our mind. Isn't that true? Isn't that true? When we know something, it's hard for anybody to change our mindset about it. So that's what it has to be. That is what that that is how your level of faith in God has to be. You don't give up and you don't back down. And I want to remind you, the Bible is demonstrating that it's okay to be persistent with God. Because honestly, as I said before, faith produces persistence. Elijah demonstrated that faith unlocks the promises of God. It shows us the power of God. It turns dreams into reality and it gives us the power to hold on in tough times. We are reminded. Now I'm going to jump to Jacob. We are reminded when Jacob wrestled with God, the scripture says, and this is how it reads. Then Jacob was left alone and a man it says a man, but that was God, wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Now, when he saw that he did not prevail against him, this is God, he touched the socket of his hip and the socket of J Jacob's hip went out of joint. It went out of joint as he wrestled with God. And he said, I will not let you go. I will not let you go. He said, but, but this is what God is saying. Let me go for the day breaks. Let me go for the day breaks. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Imagine, oh my God. He said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Jacob refused to let go of God until he received his blessing. 
and his posture was obviously pleasing to God. How I know this? Because God went ahead and blessed him. God told him, let me go. Day is coming. And Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me. So I'm telling you, that is pleasing to God. God loves persistence. God loves that you're showing him that you believe in him. You are soldier. Soldiers don't back down. Soldiers don't give up. Jacob walked away with a limp. That's how serious he wanted his blessing. Are you willing to, to walk with a limp? Are you willing to sometimes cry at night? Are you willing to say, okay, God, I'm going to sacrifice. I'm going to sow a seed. What are you willing to do for God to show him? You know what? No matter how bad the testing gets, because God does test us. No matter how bad the testing gets, I won't back down. I won't give up. I trust you, God. And Jacob refused to let go of God. Until he received his blessings. And you know what God did? God pronounced his blessings by changing his name. He said, no longer shall you be called Jacob, which means deceiver or trickster. Now you will be called Israel, meaning to strive for God. For you have striven with God and with men and have prevailed. So when God changes my name, I want my name to be called Wonderful, Glorious, Divine. What is your name? Ask God, Father, what is my name? What is my name, Lord God? Because I will not back down. I will hold on. I will hold on, Lord God, until you release my blessings. And so Jacob wrestled with God. And here's something that was interesting. The problem that Jacob had at that time was fair because Jacob, and I want you guys, if you've not heard about the story of Jacob and Esau, Jacob and Esau was in conflict and Jacob feared seeing his brother. And so that night he knew he was going to see his brother. And so he was very despondent and worried and filled with fear. And so when he wrestled with God, actually what God was trying to deal with Jacob is his fear. God was trying to deal with Jacob's fear that night. And Jacob prevailed. Because when he stayed and he wrestled with God, his faith was renewed. His faith was renewed and he went on and did some mighty things with his family. So I want to encourage you in knowing that in all that you endure, you're struggling with the faith in God. He will lead you to peace and everlasting faith. So don't back down. No matter how hard things may seem, God is with you. So I ask you this, will you wrestle with God? Will you wrestle with God? The Bible is filled with many verses that emphasizes this point. For instance, in Luke 18, God, Jesus shared with the disciples a parable about the persistent widow. And it was so interesting as he says it. One day, Jesus told his disciples that they should always pray and never give up. If Jesus can say that, why wouldn't we do that? Why wouldn't we persist? Why wouldn't we move forward and not back down, not give up? And Jesus went ahead and shared with them, there was a judge in a certain city who did not fear God and who did not care about people. And this widow in this city wanted justice. And she continued to go before this judge. And she said, give me justice. Give me justice in this dispute against my enemy. And the judge ignored her. He ignored her for a while. But guess what? That widow kept going before that judge. She kept going before that judge. Until finally the judge said, you know what? I had it. He said, although I don't fear God and I don't care about people, but this woman is driving me crazy. I am going to give her the justice that she is asking because she is wearing me out with these constant requests. Oh, glory to God. 
I'm telling you. And you know, that small parable, there's three important things that Jesus was trying to teach his disciples. One, he was showing you that there was two judges in this picture. There was that evil judge, but then there was the righteous judge. And the judge that had the power and ability to grant her request, he had to submit to the judge that she... See, here's the interesting thing. She went to see that judge by day, but she went to the other judge by night who had more power, more authority to break whatever decisions that was said. So this is what we... Let me tell you something. When God is for you, who can come against you? By day, she went to the man's system. She went to the man's court. But at night... She sought the court of God, the court of heaven, and that is the court that reigns supreme. That is the court that gave her her justice. That is the court that gave final judgment. You hear me? And let me tell you something. This widow demonstrated her boldness in faith, and she believed in God, and she did not care that this judge boldly said, I didn't believe in your God, and I don't care about people. She said, oh, really? Well, you know what? I'm going to come here every day, and I'm going to petition you, but at night, hey, I'm going to stay up all night in the face of my God who will give me justice, and my God will turn the situation around, and we will say, which judge will prevail, the courts of man or the courts of heaven? And so Jesus wanted his disciples to understand at the end of the day, you don't back down when you know who's in charge, who is the true judge. Who is the true judge? And we know our God, as he says, if God is for you, who can come against you? And so we declare that our faith will be bold and mighty. And when we face anything that the enemy sends towards us, we will pray to Jehovah Hashafat. He is our Lord, our God, our judge, as is in Judges 11 and 27. God avenges his people. And this parable highlights the fact that God desires us to cry out to him day and night. By his will, persistence in prayer is part of praying and receiving the needed answers. And you got to understand, God will not fail you. He will not fail you. So before I go on to the last and final point, let us pray. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, as your word says, Lord God, some trust in chariots, some trust in horses. But we remember that, Father God, you are our God. You are our source. You are our strength. And we thank you, God. We declare every power sent, spending the night to pull us down. Oh, son, throw them away in the name of Jesus. Oh, day arise and give us our portions in the name of Jesus. Oh, day arise and curse any power stealing our portions in the name of Jesus. Every wicked power of the second heavens that is representing our families. We say die now, die now by the fire of God in the name of Jesus. Every rod of affliction, every rod of affliction from the second heavens, we render you powerless and your words are broken now in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, bullets sent from the heavens, Lord God, we fire back, we fire back in the name of Jesus. Fire in the name of Jesus. Any problems sent to kill us, Lord God. We summons, Lord God, your godly angelic assistance. Send forth your warrior angels, Lord God, to fight on our behalf. And all our problems, our problem makers, Lord God, we subdue them by the power of the Holy Ghost. Every mouth speaking against us, Lord God, with satanic anointing. Oh, Son of God, Son of God, transfer the power back to them. Burn them, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Son of God, transfer the arrows back, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, the breaker's anointing is upon every hero of this prayer. We break the whole of the enemy, Lord God. We break the assignments of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Any altars erected with our names on it, with anyone in our family, our bloodline. Hey, Father, let's send down your fire. Send down your fire. Send it down like you did with Sodom and Gomorrah. Burn away every altar erected against us in the name of Jesus. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare your goodness, Lord God. Hey, every arrow of ancestral witchcraft, die now. In the name of Jesus, every witch, every warlock, every wizard, die now in the name of Jesus. The fire of God against you. We render you powerless in the name of Jesus. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for everything that was stolen, Lord God, from our lives by the powers of night, Lord God. We re repossess it right now. Hey, so we repossess it right now. Father, we put them right back in their proper place, Lord God. Hey, anything stolen, Lord God, we repossess it right now. Whatever the thief has stolen, Lord God, must be repaid in the name of Jesus. So, Father... I declare all afflictions, Lord God, of the day that has been cast out in the spirit realm, Lord God. We snatch it back and we release your peace. We release your joy. We release your power. We release the authority of Jesus Christ over our life, Lord God. We walk in your light. We wear your crown of glory, Lord God. We thank you, Father, for the hedge of protection that is over us, that is over our children children that is over our jobs that is over our homes lord god yes oh lord god let your oils submerge your oil from heaven lord god cover us father the blood of jesus lord god hey father anoint us with the blood we thank you god yes father we are covered father we are covered in the name of jesus and so father right now I declare that every word of this prayer, Lord, will stand, Lord God, will stand, Father, and will be, Father, executed. And it is so right now. It is so right now. We believe, Lord God, we all touch and agree on hearts and minds, Father. In the name of Jesus, oh, Father, Yeshua, we give you praise. We give you honor. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name, we pray. Amen. 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 And so the third point, God is a promise keeper. God will finish whatever he starts. You know, it, it brought me when God gave me this nugget. It made me think about Joshua and that after Moses died, God spoke to Joshua, who was a servant of Moses. And God told Joshua, my servant Moses is dead. So now therefore arise and I want you to cross the Jordan with my people. And I want you to take possession of the lands that I have promised. And I'm giving them to you to the sons of Israel. And here's the important part about that message. God said, every place on which the sole of your feet threads, I have given it to you just as I have spoken. Oh my God. Every place that the sole of his feet touches, I has given it to you. God is saying, it's already done. I have given it to you. I now, I need you to go forth and walk. I need you to go out and walk. I need you to go out and claim the possession. I need you to go out and claim the land. What is God telling you? It is already done. So it's your time. It is what is it you're going to do? Are you going to sit down and wait? God said it's already done. Wherever the sole of your feet thread, that land is yours. It is already done. So when you have made your petitions, when you have prayed to God, by faith, you have to understand that God, as long as it is his will for your life, it is already done. And you ask God, order my steps, Lord God. 
Which direction shall I go? Where should I do? What should I reject? What should I accept, Lord God? Show me. Give me the plan. Give me the vision. Give me the recipe. Give me the prescription. It was there. Joshua, all Josh, all Joshua had to do was move. God said, wherever the sole of your feet thread, that land would be yours. He went even farther and said that no man can come against you. We do know when we study the, the, the book of Joshua that there were some things that happened because of disobedience. But had there not been any disobedience, Joshua would not have lost any battles. But I'll tell you what God did. He demonstrated that whatever promises that were spoken, that he delivered it. Scholars have figured out it took Joshua and the, the people of Israel to cross the river Jordan. For, it took them about seven years. And so I want to say that because here's the thing. Many times we become wary because things don't happen immediately. Many times we become tired because what God is doing doesn't happen overnight. It took them a long time to cross over. But the point is, you got to believe. You've got to stand firm and you got to take action. You got to do whatever God tells you to do. You have to partner with God. And let me tell you something. Do not become wary in well-doing. It may have seemed that God's promises was taking a long time to manifest, but it happened. And so I want to encourage you to hold on and to trust God. When we've learned to trust God in the process of moving forward, God gives us strength. Because his promise within itself, the promise that God has given you has strength already embedded in it. Whatever task that God has given you already comes tooled up. It already comes equipped with what you need. Think about that for a moment. Even with this, even with me coming before you guys to share the word of God, I become nervous. I become nervous. But the Holy Spirit always ministers to me and remind me that I am well equipped. And so I want to encourage and remind you, whatever it is that God has spoken to you, know that you are already equipped and you are ready. It came. Let me tell you something. It's like having a bag packed ready to go to the gym. Everything that you need is in the bag. And that's how God does. He prepares us. Everything that you need, God has already provided. And the strength you need is there. But you got to make sure you know who to go to for that strength. You know, you got to know who is your provider. Who is your resource? Who is it? It is not men, but it is God. And so I just want to remind you of that. Because God told Joshua, it will always be with him and he will never leave him nor forsake him. And if God made that promise to Joshua and so many men and women of the past, he's making that same promise to us every day. I'm a witness and I know many of you guys are witnesses of this truth. How many times that God has come through? How many times that God has stand on his word? Sometimes we know it's a big shock to us. Sometimes when we believe that it's impossible, God will just come out and knock the wind out of us and surprise us. But that's who he is. And if he did it once before, he'll do it time and time again. I don't care how impossible the situation seems. Trust and believe God. Trust and believe him. God desires for you to always have confidence in him. Always. God never says that you should just sit still and do nothing. No. He's saying that I will fill you up with my spirit. And I will enrich you. I will give you the strength that you need. So you always trust that God will do his part. But you've got to do yours. You've got to do yours. And I pray to God that this message have been helpful and encouraging to everyone that is on board. That you will take this 
and whatever situation you're facing, whether it's a testing period for you or you feel like you're just straight up under attack, just know that God said he will never leave you nor forsake you. As the Bible says in Isaiah 40 and 29, God gives power to the weak and to those he, that have no strength. He increases you in strength. And just know that your God will sustain you. Just know that your God is there. Just don't back down. Because know who you are. As sons and daughters of the Most High God, you are of a royal priesthood. If God is for you, who can come against you? Mighty, mighty men and women of God you are. And so I just wanted to encourage you. Stand firm on the word of God. Don't back down. And I ask you, will you wrestle for what it is that you want? Will you wrestle? Will you wrestle with God for what you want? I wrestle with him quite often, I'll tell you that. <laughs> and I've gotten my butt whooped in many occasions. But it's all right. Because when I got my butt whooped, I, I came out stronger. Stronger. Increased faith. Increased faith. And so I want to encourage each and every one of you guys, as you go forth today, hold on to this message. And stand boldly on the word of God and don't back down because God is with you. And who God is with, no man can come against. So I bless you. I thank God for each and every one of you. And I pray that this message was a blessing. God bless you. And look, I have my little Wakandas. <laughs> if you didn't see Black Panther, go out and see it. I'm still a, a little bit, I, have, I still have a natural high from the movie. But I thank God for each and every one of you guys. Bless God for you. I thank God. Go forth, mighty men and women of God, and have an awesome day until we meet up again. And um, Dr. Jackson will be back tomorrow morning for POW, and also um, Secrets from the Locker Room at 8 o'clock um, at 8 p.m. So look out for that. So God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Oh, I'm, I'm thankful, Sharita. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.